hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. And we will rejoice in it. Amen? Is everybody okay? Are you awake yet or what? We need to do another six hours of worship? Hallelujah, I'd love it. <laughs> oh, grab your swords and prepare. Glory. Kate, would you push that down? Thank you. Hallelujah. Would you go to Matthew 7, please? Matthew chapter 7. You know, we are in uh, the last days, amen? And the Word tells us that in the last days, deception will increase. And that many will fall in the area of great delusion because they're not lovers of the truth. To be a lover of the truth, you must seek the truth. And when you seek the truth and find the truth, then you must put it into practice. Amen? That's one who loves the truth. If you're not putting it into practice, then you don't love truth. There's a lot of people that know truth and don't put it into practice. There's a lot of people that know the Bible from page one to page whatever. And they're still going to hell because they don't know, they're not willing to practice the truth. You know, we are in such a battle right now, and it's a spiritual battle. What you see in the physical realm is happening in the spiritual realm. And there is a fight going on big time right now. And you cannot rely on what you see and what you hear from the world. That's why it's important for me and you to cross over and press in and get your direct information from the throne of God. The Holy Spirit will never mislead you. He will guide you to all truth. He will tell you things that are coming. And I want you to know right now that we have, are seeing in the greatest thing operation from heaven. This is the most awesome sting operation that God has done in the powers of darkness. They're going to all be exposed. Don't be misled. Don't be deceived. Biden did not win. Blue's going down. Bakatasia. And red is arising. The kingdom of God will take over this earth. Don't be deceived. Darkness will go underground for a period of time. They will arise when God decides to put his foot off of them. When he moves his foot, they will rise again, and he will let them have authority to take over the earth again. But not now. Right now he's doing a sting operation. Exposing to arrest, and he's going to put them under his feet. They will go underground for a period of time, and then he will let them arise again. When they arise, you and I will be gone. God willing. <laughs> and Matthew chapter 7. So again, don't be deceived. Look at it. Deception promotes deception. Does everybody understand that? Deception promotes deception. There's a Propaganda agendas, amen? There's indoctrination, not education. It's different. And what we're seeing right now is phenomenal. We know that the polls are done wrong. You can't believe anything that you hear from the media. It's all corrupt. 
The internet is corrupt. The ruler of this earth is Mr. Corruption. He's a liar and a deceiver and the father of all. So how can you believe anything that you hear from the world? You must press in and cross over to the throne and hear from your daddy. And I'm telling you right now, this is a sting operation for my father. And he will put them under his feet for a period of time. And we will see the largest harvest. Because in this period of time of plenty, he will pour out the early and latter rain. Matthew 7, verse 13. Enter in by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to what? So it's an easy way to go to destruction, isn't it? And there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the what? Way that which leads to life. And there are few who find it. In other words, there is going to be resistance in your life when you decide to follow the truth. He says, verse 17, read it with me. Or 15, I'm sorry. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. Will you see those newscasters? Journalists, news reporters, interneters, all of these websites, I can tell you right now that right now the rulers of those areas, which believe that they are gods, they call them the elite, have control over it. And they are nullifying. I'm telling you, 800 million places have been shut down that are promoting what God is trying to do through the internet to reach people truth does everybody understand that truth is what sets people free doesn't it but god's got another plan so since they're resisting him he's going to snare them <laughs> he's setting up traps for them they will fall in their own nets and there will not be an escape for them the only escape i see is prison so beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their what? Their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down in what? thrown in the what? In the fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. Now he says something powerful. I want you to know that there's fruits of deception, and these are things that we must understand. There are fruits of deception. He says, look at 21, look at there. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the what? Will of my Father in earth. So many people are going to think because they've been good. Because they feed, clothe, and shelter those in need. That they're good. He says, yeah. They're going to promote themselves of good works. He says, but many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, I have, have we not what? prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name <laughs> and done many wonders in your name in other words God allowed them to use them because his purpose is to rescue those who've been taken captive but even though no matter whether who it doesn't matter whether God's using you or not you still must stand before him personally And, and then, verse 23, I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice what? Lawlessness. Wow. So beware of false voices. <laughs> Communication devices. <laughs> Such as the media, music, books, 
television, education, false testimonies, false religions, doctrines of demons, occultism. How about family friends that speak the truth or don't speak the truth? Why? Because deception is lawlessness. And lawlessness is sin. And the fruit of deception is bondage, which leads to death. So the enemy wants to keep people in a deceptive state of being so they can't see, hear, or follow. They are relying on man. They're relying on the things of the world. They rely on Google. Amen? Revelation 12. Listen, there are a lot of things that are happening in the church. You're finding a lot of denominations that have defiled the Word of God. See, without the Spirit, you won't understand and interpret nothing. You'll interpret it in your own carnal mind and try and understand it. And it won't work. So they try to preach the word, but yet they're practicing the same things. Same sex, perversion, illegal activities, greed, lust of money, lust of the flesh, pride of life. All of these things that are, people are declaring to be Christians or promotion of pulpits to gain advantage of individuals, not preaching the truth, afraid that they're going to lose people. We are in the days, the final days, the final moments. Jesus is coming. And everybody will stand before him. But he's trying to give people an, a last opportunity. Now this last opportunity will be about three or four years. Who knows? Could be 10 years. I sure hope not. I doubt it. If you understand the scriptures and what's happening, it's almost over. So everybody needs to get their house in order, an area of your personal self. It says in Revelation 12, verse 7, read it with me. It says, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the what? Devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. I can't say that enough times. Is he the ruler of this earth? Yes. So he's got everybody in deception, doesn't he? He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. Those are principalities. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ has come. Why? So that his children, his followers, could overcome deception. Who accuses them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows that he has a what? Short time. He knows it right now. He's doing everything that the powers of darkness can to take out as many souls as possible and keep people in the state of deception. The power of his Christ has come to overcome deception. The world is under the deception and evil is doing all they can because of their short time before their temporary removal. And they will be removed for a short period of time. And Jeremiah 17. So by their fruits you will what? 
know them. Jeremiah 17, verse 5, and let's speak it together. Everybody okay? <clears throat> Thus says the Lord, cursed, everyone say cursed, is the man who trusts in man and makes flesh his strength whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like a shrub in the desert and shall not see when good comes, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabitable. Wow. Deception, a weapon of evil and corruption. <clears throat> see, it not only brings bondage, but it brings a curse. which allows access of demonic spirits into a human soul and body. Verse 7. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, which spreads out its roots by the river, and will not fear when heat comes or trouble comes or deception arises. But its leaf will be green, and he will not be anxious. He won't be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit, good fruit. The heart is the deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart, and I test the thoughts and de on the heart is desperately, uh, deceitfully above all, is wicked above all things. He checks it out. He checks us personally, each and in, in, every individual, no matter what. He searches the heart and tests the thoughts of man, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruits of his doings. Again, deception is that weapon. Amen. God searches the desires of the hearts and the thoughts of the mind to expose the fruits of deception. And what, Why? Because it's caused by the presence of wicked spirits. Amen? He searches us out. That's where conviction comes from. He brings conviction. But if there's some, remember, deception promotes deception. If a person is so deceived and deep, conviction is not reaching them because their heart is too hard. They're so engulfed in their agenda and their belief system that they're not willing to search out the truth. In Psalm 28. Fruits of deception. It's bondage. Brings a curse. Opens the door to witchcraft. You know, it, when, when you really, if you really talk to someone that's really veiled and under deception, you can see that it's like you're talking to a faceless person. Because that curse is there. They're under a trance. And they can't see out. They can't see. They can't hear. The only thing they're so engulfed because that spirit's got them so bound. And they live in fear. Psalm 28, let's speak it together. To you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. Do not be silent to me, lest if you are silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Now listen, what is he saying? He's saying because he, I, I don't want to compare myself with those that don't hear your voice because they're headed onto the pit. Don't be silent, Lord. Don't move your voice. Don't remove it. 
I want to hear your voice because I don't want to be like those who go down to the pit who do not listen to you. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry to you, when I lift my hands toward your holy sanctuary. Do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity who speak peace to their neighbors, but evil is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them according to the work of their hands. Render to them what they deserve. Because why? Because they do not regard the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. See, there are many people who call themselves believers who do not understand or see that God's hand is on Donald Trump. They don't see it. And they are cursed. But bless me the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am what? Helped. My heart trusted in him. I am helped. Therefore my heart what? Greatly rejoices, and with my song I will praise him. The Lord is their strength. He is the saving refuge of his what? Anointed those who are under covering of Christ Jesus through the blood of Christ and filled with the Spirit of God. Remember, the anointing is the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. So that means his word, his presence, and his power is carried in the anointing of Christ Jesus. Which when you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you are anointed. Does everybody get it? You must be baptized with the Holy Spirit to become anointed. Without the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are not anointed yet. You may be called. Hello? In other words, God's trying to draw you. But he's trying to bring you to the next level of call. That means that you must be empowered and backed by heaven by the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, what evidence of gifts of the Spirit. He says, save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. Here we see that this is a cry of freedom and vindication from deception. Proverbs 23. You know, in your penetrating prayer booklet, there is a prayer against deception. It's powerful. Proverbs 23 and verse 1. Fruits of deception. Is everybody there? Verse 20, uh, verse 1. Let's speak it together. When you sit down to eat with a ruler, again, when you sit down and partake of those in authority, or if you're going to partake of something, like a music, hello? See, it's not just someone with authority. It's a place and position. That's what it represents. So when you decide to sit down and partake and, and, and TV, movies, whatever it may be, make sure that it isn't going to corrupt you. Amen? When you sit down to eat with a ruler, consider carefully what you're going to partake with or before you, what's before you. And put a knife to your throat if you are a man or woman given to appetite. In other words, eating things that are unhealthy for you, spiritual things. Amen? Do not desire his delicacies, for they are what? Deceptive food. So what you're seeing right now through the media is releasing deceptive food. And people are eating it. What they're hearing through the music, MTV is deceptive food. Listen, there's a lot of so-called Christian bands out there, but they're really not Christian. They're wolves in sheep's clothing. And people are eating of it just because the lyrics are sounding good, but yet the rhythm is destroying people because they do not understand. 
They try to take something from the past and try and sanctify it in the present by changing words in it. But the rhythm is still penetrating and bringing destruction to the soul. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Do not overwork to be rich because of your own understanding cease. Will you set your eyes on that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wings. They fly away like an eagle toward heaven. Do not eat the bread of a miser, nor desire his delicacies. As he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. The morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Do not speak in the hearing of a fool, for he will despise the wisdom of your words. A fool is under a curse, blinded. Is everybody okay? Here, why do you think people are practicing lawlessness? <laughs> why? Because they're eating deceptive foods. They're staying blinded. And, and these people that you even tried to talk to about what is the truth, they can't receive the truth because they're not willing to eat it. They can't even digest it. That's why they vote and promote for the things that God disapproves of. They're under a great deception and delusion right now. We must be able to see the fruits of these things. We must be able to discern the deception of the enemy. And you can't do that without the infilling of the Holy Spirit who guides you to all truth. Again, deception promotes deception. Jesus said, feed on my faithfulness, not on deception. And many people are compromised in that area. They're trying to mix the deceptive food with righteous food, and it's not going to work. Ephesians 5. Listen, deception is started in the garden, amen? <laughs> well, actually, it started in the throne room of God. God removed it, though. Lucifer, the father of deception. Because he began to exalt himself. Immediately, exaltation of self is deception. That's why people fight for their lives instead of his life. Why? They're under deception. In verse 8, Ephesians 5, 8. Let's speak it. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and what? Truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light. For whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake, you who sleep under deception. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine or deceptive drink, in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit of God, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart toward the Lord, and giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, and submitting to one another in reverence and honor and in fear of the Lord. Respect. So that means respecting one another. Amen. Expose the fruits of deception. That's what he's saying. Expose the fruits of deception. 2 Timothy 3. Again, the, the first fruit of deception is bondage, blindness, deafness. Can't see through, 
can't hear it through? Hear what? God's voice. It gets, becomes nullified. Hallelujah. In verse 1, 2 Timothy 3, verse 1. Is everybody there? But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. Here we are. Here's the fruits of deceptions. Amen. Look at what does it say? For men will be what? Lovers of themselves. Great deception. They got a trinity, me, myself, and I. Lovers of money. Oh, man, they work all kinds of hours. See, one of the things the devil loves to do is get person in debt. If he can get a person in debt, that enemy, that person ends up serving the devil and doesn't even know it. Well, how did that person get in debt? Deception. Remember, it brings bondage. Does everybody understand that? Oh, it looks great. It looks wonderful. Debt. Debt prevents individuals from really serving God in the fullness of what they're called. Amen? I couldn't wait to get out of debt. I knew it. Well, after I got saved, and I was in debt. And sweet believers used to tell me, man, don't fight. You can't file bankruptcy. It's against God. I said, really? I couldn't find it in the Bible. I knew there was Jubilee. <laughs> So I was driving a 46 Chrysler limo, having to die in front of a store. And I kept asking the Lord, what am I supposed to do about this debt, Lord? I don't want debt. So I got out of the car, went into this Cumberland Farms. And right there in one of those little paper stands was a get out of debt attorney. <laughs> file bankruptcy. I said, Lord, do you want me to file bankruptcy? He said, use the laws of the land, guy. Cost me 250 bucks. And it may be 200 something bucks to file it. And it was done and over. I was out of debt, never decided. I'd say, I'm never going in debt again. Why? Because I knew how it had affected people. I see how it affects people's lives, affects people's marriages, it affects everything. Debt. I never want to be deceived to go into debt again. Amen? Hey, listen, God can pull anybody out of debt. I know people, he's pulled out that old $80,000, $30,000, all kinds of stuff. But you better get in position and stay in position and be consistent. You want God to move on your behalf, you better move on his behalf. See, people want things from God, but they're not willing to maintain. Oh, happy days. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters. Proud, blasphemous, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And they have a form of godliness because they call themselves Christians, but they're really not. And from such people do what? Don't associate, turn away from them. Amen? Listen, you want, people, you want to hang around with those that have a pure heart. You want to hang around those that love the presence of God more than anything in their lives. Those are the people that you want to hang around with. Why? Because they won't betray you. Without the presence of God and the anointing maintained in your life, people fall into the spirit of Judas. Everybody okay? Lovers of self. <laughs> First sign. Again, people are in bondage. They're lovers of themselves. What happens? One of the things that happens is an individual begins to lose peace. When you lose peace, you're under deception. Do you understand that? The peace is gone. It comes and goes. It's unstable peace. There's anxiousness peace. Fear peace. That means there's deception there. Oh, hallelujah. First sign, loss of peace, self-trust, out of routine, inconsistent. Compromise the truth. 
and begins to drift from the fear of God. One of the things that happens when deception comes, you compromise your battle, your fight. You're not as aggressive as you used to be. The word says the heavens are taken by violence. And the violent take it by force. Listen, you're not going to take any part of heaven or any area of darkness if you're not aggressive to take it. Amen? You'll find that that the battle begins to diminish that aggressiveness. You drift from battle. The only thing that the fight is for is now worldly desires. See, the, the fight for destroying Satan's kingdom begins to drift and diminish, but the fight for worldliness and pleasures, of worldly pleasures begins to increase. That's called deception. Is everybody okay? One of the things that also happens, what follows in that area is rebellion, pride, and confusion. That's where people go back into addiction because they're looking for a way out instead of a way in. Hello? James chapter 3. Everybody okay? James chapter 3. If you think God is just speaking to you personally, He is. <laughs> but you're not the only one. <laughs> He's speaking to us all. He's speaking to the whole body of Christ. Listen, we are going to enter a jubilee that's going to free people from debt. You're going to find out people are going to get freed from debt. Miracles are going to begin to happen in that arena. But you better stay in position. God does not reward people that are inconsistent. He doesn't reward people that are not fighters for his presence. James chapter 3, verse 13. Fruits of deception. Who is what? Wise and understanding among you. Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. In other words, he's a responder, not a reactor. Does everybody get it? Some people are nuclear reactors. Hallelujah. And their contamination. They let off a radiation, a demonic radiation, amen? <laughs> and they don't charge anything. <laughs> no power, man. <laughs> Who is wise among you? Yes, let him show by good conduct that he's a responder, not a reactor. Verse 14. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. Do not justify. See, the quicker be people become honest, the more they can come out of deception. Honesty is light. Amen? It's truth. Being honest. It's amazing how, how many people are still not telling the truth to themselves. And when you find out that you lied by mistake, Repent quickly. Gosh, Lord, I didn't mean to say that. Have mercy upon me. Restore me. Don't take the Holy Spirit from me. Why? Because you just grieve the Spirit. Amen? Again, he knows we're going to make mistakes. He knows we're boneheads sometimes. He knows we're frail. That's why we have the Holy Spirit. The anointing, 
eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. We got no excuse. It's just the power to choose which way you're going to go. Hallelujah. But if, verse 14, if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above. It is what? Earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. That means it's deceptive. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. So when a person falls into the state of confusion, it's because deception is the originator. The enemy loves to put people in a state of confusion. That doesn't mean you don't know what to do in something. That doesn't mean you're confused. So does everybody understand that? Listen, you're not, there's things that God is not going to tell you. He's going to tell you, trust me. Trust me. It's not an area of your relationship is not based on understanding everything. It's based on trusting everything of him. I don't understand why certain things happen. I don't like why certain things happen. Especially when things break down and you got to pay for them all over again. <laughs> Hello. But you know what, you all, you got to step back out of any puddle of affliction. Never stand in it. Step out of it. Hallelujah. Many are the afflicted, but the Lord delivers them out of all. See, people get freaked out because they got to pay for something that's damaged or something that they've done. First of all, it's not our money. It's his. He's looking for good stewards. If you're a good steward of his money, you can spend it all and he's going to refill it. Come on, do you get that? I'm telling you, if you use his money correctly, he will refill it every time. But if you use it incorrectly, you're going to have to fill it until you choose to use it right. Hallelujah. Man, I spent so much money on dope, I could have built two cities and probably three airports. It's amazing I'm still alive. <laughs> but by his mercies and grace, when I became a Christian as a new cre creation in Christ, those things all were gone. So it's what you do afterwards. Amen? So why? Everything was under the blood now. But even though that things are under the blood and you're a new creation in Christ, there's still things, some from your past, that he's going to cut you loose from. I said he'll cut you loose from, not you. And that's one of the things I had to learn. Every time I thought about something, reconciliation with somebody or what this or that, whatever, the Lord said, no, not now. Let me take this guy. Why? Because if you do this, then you're going to take care of it, and I'm not. He said, if I reconcile it, I got it. If you do it, you got it. Where your hand is, mine's not. Amen? And again, this is where it goes down to your relationship with him. If you have a true, close relationship, you will trust him. I'm not going to say you're not going to get frustrated because he doesn't move the way you want him to. Gosh, Lord, I can't believe you let all this to happen. But hallelujah. You're going to work it out. Because I'm keeping my hands out of it. Unless you tell my hands to get in it. Amen? Oh, happy days. Where were we? <laughs> Glory. Is everybody okay? Let's do this one more time in verse, yes, 16. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and everything are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. First what? Pure. And what else? Peaceable, gentle, willing to submit or yield, full of mercy, and what? Good fruits, without 
partiality and without hypocrisy. And now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Be a peacemaker. Amen? One day my wife and I were traveling. We are on the road. And this one person in front of us cut off another person. And man, they were upset. They started chasing that person. And I saw a gun get pulled out. And I shared with my wife, catch up to them. And as we got close up to next to them, I had a Bible and I put it up against the window. That's all I could do. And that person slowed down. Peacemaker. Does everybody understand that? That's all I did was put the Bible up against the window. Because, <laughs> you know, going that fast on the highway, you can't speak to one another. And I said to my wife, I said, man, this, somebody's going to get killed here. We got to do something. And we did. The only thing I could do is put the Bible up against the window. And they saw the Bible. And they slowed down. Be ready in season and out. Amen? Hallelujah. See, what happens is envy and self-seeking, bitterness, unforgiveness, pride, arrogance, confusion, all these fruits of deception. They're all fruits of deception. How about offense? That's a fruit of deception. You know, when people are told something and they don't like it, they can fall right into deception. Why? Because they're still trying to protect themselves. If you're told something that you don't like, search it out. Find out if it's true. If it's not true, then don't worry about it. God's got it. He has the last say, and he knows everything. People fall into the areas of and partakers of the tree of death, and it's not the tree of life. Deception leads people, remember, deception promotes deception, which leads them to deceptive foods, which is the tree of death, good and evil, not the tree of life. Then what happens is self they become self-justifying of goodness and good works and good intents, which are all deceptive. It's not by our works, it's by your relationship. Our works should... Be righteous because of your relationship. But we don't expose our works of how our relationship is. Our relationship is exposed by his works through us. Amen? Philippians 4. Oh, glory. Glory. Philip 4. Fruits of deception. Philippians 4, 4. And 4 and 4. Just 4 today. Let's speak it. Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice. Everyone say rejoice. It doesn't say be miserable. It says rejoice. Where? In the Lord when? I feel like it? Always. Always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say what? Rejoice. And let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is where? At hand. That his presence is there. Because you're not a reactor. You're a responder. Be anxious for everything. Be anxious for what? Nothing. Listen, anxiety is a fruit of deception. Fear is a fruit of deception. To be anxious is a fruit of deception. There's nothing about being excited about something that's good. But so many people make decisions out of anxiety. Anxious. You know why? Because they can't wait. If you've got to have it now, then you're under deception. 
Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by what? Prayer and supplication with what? Thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So God, God, he's got it, right? And then what? Once you've released the request, the peace of God's going to come on you. As long as you don't move out of position. Or else you'll fall into what? Anxiousness. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your thoughts through Christ Jesus. Now look at the next verse. Finally, brethren, whatever things are what? True, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, and whatever things are good, report. If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, medicate, meditate. <laughs> medicate on those, will you? But don't take medication. Meditate on these things, man. Focus on those things. Don't focus on the ways of the world. Focus on those good things. Remember all the things that God has done for you. And stop looking at what you don't have. Thank God for what you have. You have a fresh breath today. You've been in God's presence. He's pleased with you for fighting for his presence. Hallelujah. What more do you want? I know. Be debt free. It's coming. It's coming, man. It's coming. <laughs> Glory. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Now he says, verse 9, the things which you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, these what? Do. Be a doer, not a sayer. And the God of peace will be with you. Hebrews 6. Under deception, joy is replaced with fear, with an anxiousness. One of the things that begins to happen is a person begins to drift from, from the position of endurance. They're no longer endurance. They're no longer patient. They're no longer trusting God. They're refocused on selfish ambitions and plans, whether they are a worldliness unknowing or unknowing. And one of these things will lead back to destruction and under control of deceptive world. Hebrew, verse 6, or chapter 6, sorry, verse 1. Hebrews 6, 1. What a time to be awake and stay alert. See, the enemy wants to put you back to sleep. Verse 1, let's speak it together. Hebrews 6. Therefore, leaving the discussion of elementary, uh, elementary principles of Christ, let us go what? On to what? Perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works or faith toward God. Of the doctrines of baptisms, of the laying on of hands, of resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. But for what is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they fall away to renew them again to repentance, since they crucify again for themselves the Son of God and put them to an open shame. In other words, it's hard. An individual is taken captive in this deception. Only God can rescue them. Does everybody understand it? Only God can rescue them. When a person falls back multiple times, only God can rescue them. Until they finally eat enough dirt or come to the senses, hit a couple walls, get dragged through the bushes, whatever they got to do. You know, many people get rescued in jail. Why? Because they can't do nothing else. Their attention is now taken away. Now it's brought upon themselves. God, what did I do? How did I get here? See, that's because why? They were under deception, haven't they? This is all influence, isn't it? We have to be so careful now, especially it is so strong out there. Verse 7, for the earth which drinks in the rain that often comes upon it and bears her herbs useful for those by whom it is cultivated receives blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and briars, it is rejected and near to being cursed whose end will be burned. 
But, beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that are accompanying salvation, though we speak in this matter. For God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love, which you have cho shown toward his name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end, that you do not become sluggish, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Hallelujah. Many will fall away and drift from the truth into deception and avoid trying to avoid exposure with self-justification and lack of accountability. Lack of what? Accountability. When a person, when you have a desire in you to walk away and hide accountability, there's deception. Because you're trying to hide something. Does everybody get it? That means there's deception involved. What do you think the enemy's doing right now? He's preventing people from assembling, isn't he? You know what that's causing? The lack of accountability. Many people are falling back to their old ways. Addiction is increasing. Deaths of overdose are increasing. The plague's not increasing. That's all a bunch of stinking lies anyway. You know, it's still amazing to me of how the power of darkness has brought the whole world under a deception. You know, think about it. This is a world deception right now. It's global. It's not just United States or a city. This is a world deception. The whole world is under, has been veiled again when Jesus unveiled it once. But only those who are unveiled are able to see things through. So now, the truth, the light, and the life of Christ Jesus is trying to unveil on the other individuals that have been taken captive. It's amazing to me, the whole world, we've never seen this in our lifetime. We've never seen the whole world under the great deception, never. You and I are the generation of the return of the Lord. He's raising up an army to fight. We must be fighters. Fighters for his presence, fighters for truth. Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Let's go to Job 20 for a second. Yes. It's the employment section. Hallelujah. Job 20. Is everybody there? Job 20, verse 2. <clears throat> Job 22, 20. Verse 2. <laughs> Is everybody there? Cool. Let's speak it. Therefore, my anxious thoughts make me answer because of the turmoil within me. Hello. I have heard the rebuke that reproaches me, and the spirit of my understanding causes me to answer. Do you not know these of old? Since man was placed on earth, that the triumphing of the wicked is short. And the joy of the hypocrite is but for a moment. Though his haughtiness mounts up to the heavens and his head reaches to the clouds, yet he will perish forever like his own refuge. Those who have seen him will say, where is he? He will fly away like a dream and not be found. Yes, he will be chased away like a vision of the night. The eye that saw him will see him no more nor will his place behold him anymore. His children will seek the favor of the poor, and his hands will restore his wealth. His bones are full of his youthful vigor, but it will lay down with him in dust. Though evil is sweet in his mouth, and he hides it under his tongue, 
though he spares it and does not forsake it, but still keeps it in his mouth. Yet his food is in his stomach turned sour and becomes a cobra of venom within him. He swallows down riches and vomits them up again. God casts them out of his belly. He will suck the poison of cobras. The viper's tongue will slay him. He will not see the streams, the rivers flowing with honey and cream. He will restore that which he labored and will not swallow it down. From the proceeds of business, he will get no enjoyment, for he has oppressed and forsaken the poor. He has violently seized a house which he did not build. Because he knows no quietness in his heart, he will not save anything he desires. Nothing is left for him to eat. Therefore, his well-being will not last. In his self-sufficiency, will be in his distress. Every hand of misery will come upon against him. When he is about to fill his stomach, God will cast him on the fury of his wrath. He will rain on him while he is eating. He will flee from the iron weapon. A bronze bow will pierce him through. It is drawn and comes out the body. Yes, the glittering point comes out of his, of his gall. Tears come, come upon him. Total darkness is reserved for his treasures. An unfeigned fire will consume him. It shall go ill with him who is left in his tent. The heavens will reveal his iniquity, and the earth will rise up against him. The increase of his house will depart, and his, good, and his goods will flow away in the day of his wrath. This is the portion from God for the wicked man, the heritage appointed to him by God. Why? Those are under deception. Those are under great deception. And I'm going to close at 1 Corinthians 6. Listen, God did not appoint us to be impoverished. Does everybody understand that? Poverty comes by deception. You know, many, many people have been grown in, uh, brought up in poverty. But yet they came out of it and became wealthy. Because the traditions that were brought down were deceptive tradition, traditions. And I'll never forget, I saw a priest on TV declaring that he, he, he was proclaiming the uh, poverty. He said, I, 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 I accept poverty. So what an idiot. Doesn't read the word, obviously. God came to bring us life and life abundantly, not to impoverish us. We are not to be poor. Those that are standing on the streets begging are under deception. Amen? The best way we can help them is not only with finances, but with truth. Amen? When I'm going places, I see people, and they're asking for food and whatever. You don't see work for food no more. Hello? I haven't seen that in a long time. They don't want to work for food. They just want the money. So I give them a total freedom card. Here's a place that will help you. Some of them really thank me. Thank you very much. Some of them just throw the card back at you because they just want money. But again, that's all a part of deception. Deception destroys people. And the rule of this earth, its greatest weapon is deception. And its power is fear. Is everybody okay? We must understand the fruits of deception. Listen, you must catch it before it brings you deeper. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse something. Let's go to verse uh, 12. Let's speak it. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own what? Affections or... Is everybody there? Oh, I'm, in, I'm sorry. It's 2 Corinthians 6. Not 1 Corinthians. Sorry. 2 Corinthians. Glory to God. Although 1 Corinthians 6 is good. <laughs> but we better go back to that. But let's go to 2 Corinthians 6 first. <laughs> You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own desires, affections. Now in return for the same, 
I speak, to, I speak as to children, you also be open. Do not be what? Of unevenly yoked with what? Unbelievers. People that are all yoked with unbelievers are under deception. Listen, how, how do you expect to get a new life if you're going to still hang around with those of your old life? It don't work. You'll fall. But they're my friends. No, they're your enemies. Friends are enemies. When you come into the kingdom, you only have brothers and sisters. They're no longer friends. Remember, Jesus called Judas friend. For what fellowship is righteousness with lawlessness, and what communion is light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial, or what has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with what? Idols. For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, and they'll be my people if they do something. If they what? Come out from among them. And be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean. Is deception unclean? Yes. And I will receive you. I'll be a father to you, and you will be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Come out from among them. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians 6. I'm, I'm going to read that now. <laughs> oh, happy days. Hallelujah. Verse 7. 1 Corinthians 6, 7. Now, therefore, everybody there? It is already an utter failure for you to go to the law against one another. Why do you not rather accept wrong? Why do you not rather let yourselves be cheated? No, you yourselves do wrong and cheat. And you do these things to your brethren. Why? They're under deception. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be what? Deceived. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, nor thieves, nor covetousness, nor drunkards, drug addicts, no revelries, no extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. That's pretty, pretty intense. Remember, who you serve when you die is where you go. And such were some of you. Yep. But you were washed, but you were sanctified, but you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All these things are lawful for me, but not all things are what? Helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any deception. Foods for the stomach and the stomach for foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? Everyone say, I'm not my own. The Lord owns this property. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God, God in, your body, in your body and in your spirit, which are what? God's. It's amazing how we fight for what we think is ours. Hallelujah. We're not ours. He bought us. We're owned by him. Amen. We're sealed by him. You're his seal on you, the enemy sees. As long as you're in position and maintain that position, that seal maintains. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you continue to give us the discernment to catch the fruits of deception before it grabs hold of us. 
prepare our hearts for communion and bring your tithes and offerings up. In Jesus' name.